The last video exploded. Comment after comment. I can't stop. Sex is the trigger. Meth is the glue. Two addictions, one cycle. And everyone's asking, how do I break it? Stay with me because I'll show you the exact six step roadmap I use with my own patients. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist and educator. Whether you're a clinician, in recovery, or supporting someone, this video is for you. If you're a clinician, you'll walk away with a dual track treatment model. If you're in recovery, you'll understand why relapse isn't failure, but a pattern. If you love someone in the cycle, you'll gain tools that don't pull you under. Here's what we're covering in this video. First, why meth and sex addiction is uniquely hard to treat. Two, the brain circuits involved. Three, medications that actually help. Four, how to restore intimacy without shame. And finally, a recovery plan that's realistic, doable, and full of hope. So let's look at why this addiction is different. Picture two rivers. One is dopamine, meth. The other is oxytocin and intimacy, sex. Separately, powerful. Together, a flood that rewires everything. Clients say, I quit meth, but sex triggered a full relapse. I avoided sex, then got lonely, and used again. You can avoid needles, you can avoid bars, but you can't avoid being a sexual human. So treatment can't amputate sexuality. It must teach you to use it safely. So let's look at the brain behind the bond. What's happening neurobiologically? First, the dopamine surge. Meth elevates dopamine a thousand percent above baseline. Orgasm, 150 to 200 percent above baseline. Together, over three thousand percent. The brain says, do it again, no matter the cost. Two, arousal templates. Amygdala and hippocampus encode the moment. One trigger, a scent, a notification, and you're right back in the loop. Third, the memory mismatch. Verbal memory fades. Visual memory sharpens. You forget therapy homework. One image, craving floods in. Remember this visual dominance because we'll flip it later. Then comes the fallout because this isn't just about cravings, it's about brain bandwidth. Executive fog, planning and decision-making stalls. Anhedonia, nothing feels good. Impulsivity, the pause button's broken. Intrusive fantasies, thoughts you can't stop. And attachment confusion, craving closeness but fearing connection. That's why treatment must meet the brain where it is, with empathy, somatic grounding, and tiny wins. So let's look at the two-track recovery model. Track one, no meth, no stimulants, 90 days minimum to reset dopamine pathways. Track two, sexual reintegration, rewiring desire safely. Skip either track, the system collapses. Now we'll stitch this into your step-by-step -step roadmap soon. Let's start off with medication. Note, this is support, not a shortcut. Medications don't replace therapy, but they hold the ladder while you climb. First, bupropion. Think about bupropion like jumper cables for dopamine. It helps with anhedonia and libido, but it can cause early anxiety and insomnia. So this should be paired with sleep support. We then have naltrexone. Think about it as bubble wrap around your reward center. It blocks the rush from meth or orgasm, the oh wow feeling. Next, we have mirtazapine that has shown benefits in methamphetamine use, helps with sleep, appetite, and therefore prefrontal recovery. There is also evidence it reduces risky sex in men who have sex with men when paired with CBT. But watch for grogginess and plan mornings accordingly. We then have armodafinil and modafinil, great for lingering brain fog and difficulty staying awake but use only when stable because it can worsen anxiety if used too early. And here is a combo highlight that's shown benefits in research. Bupropion plus naltrexone halved relapse in a 2021 NEJM study on men having sex with men using meth. But what do we avoid with medications? High dose SSRIs that crush libido or result in emotional blunting and cognitive fog. Psychedelics in early recovery may be too volatile, so exercise caution. Next, we look at stabilization. The first four weeks is crisis containment. Here, focus on sleep, at least seven and a half hours fixed wake sleep time. 
nutrition, protein, omega-3 fatty acids, hydration, workup, ECG, LFTs, HIV screen, and psychiatric screening, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, sleep disorders, because each one of these makes the brain more vulnerable to relapse. Environment, remove triggers, check housing safety, support, daily check-ins, phone detox. These aren't optional, they're the floor recovery stands on. Then we come to therapy and belonging, because we know no one recovers alone. Here, we have options such as the matrix model, structured CBT for stimulants, which is a gold standard, and you pair that with urine drug screen. Two, motivational interviewing plus CBT light. Adaptable, modular, and effective. Third, groups, 12-step programs, because connection heals. And then trauma work, only one stable, EMDR, trauma-focused CBT, somatic approaches. Fifth, sexual boundary mapping. And here's the key, programs that combine sex plus stimulant work. They double retention. From here, we can move towards rewiring sexuality. Rebuilding desire and intimacy starts by pausing it. Here, we go through three phases. Phase one, zero to 60 days. This consists of abstinence, only self-touch and masturbation if it's not dissociative, breath and pelvic floor work. Phase two, two to six months. Gradual exposure to cues, touch, scent, visual exposure. Sensed focus strategies. Erotic audio and reading versus viewing porn. Phase three, six plus months. Partnered sex, slow, mindful, and feedback-based. Reframe fantasies. Return to dating apps only with three plus months of stability. This is the template hack where arousal meets intention. Now, what do therapists need to know? This is something for clinicians. Ditch moral judgment because curiosity connects. Validate shame, saying that took a lot of courage to say. Supervise counter-transference. Hold structure, no blurred lines, boundary setting. And finally, be a co-regulator nervous system to nervous system. And here is a key piece, reintegration of identity. For many individuals, this is the first time they're going to have sex sober. For many MSM clients, men who have sex with men, this is a second coming out. This is now sex without meth. So what can one do? Mirror work, self-touch, self-compassion. Practice micro-intimacies, eye contact, shared breath, and rebuild belief because pleasure doesn't require chaos. And finally, the six step recovery roadmap. First, take a break from sex. Let your receptors reset. Two, kill the cues, delete apps, toss the gear. Third, grieve the chemsex era. Fourth, redefine pleasure, sensation over fantasy. Fifth, expand intimacy, connection without speed. Sixth, avoid black or white thinking. Relapse, find the broken step, rebuild and climb again. Remember, you are not your last relapse. You are not your worst day. You're a neuroplastic organism wired to recover. If this video changed your perspective, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future videos. Share this with someone who might be trapped in the cycle. Drop a comment if this is something you're experiencing or as a clinician working with someone in recovery. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, and until next time, stay curious, stay compassionate, because intensity is optional. Intimacy is sustainable. Bye-bye.